sponsor's 10-year tip with Gary Dibley. Well, good evening. It is a Monday night. It is nine o'clock and it is time to tin your tip with myself, Gary, Dave, Dibley and the ever capable mod master that is Mark. Um, this week uh, I, I tackle um, I tackle a tip uh, after watching obviously Graham from Cyan Mods uh, last week um, show us how to do it in a most expert way. Um, I have uh, thrown my hand in. Now I've, I've been playing, I've been playing lots and, and tonight um, I'm sort of making a, a tip a day and there's a very good reason for that I'll explain a little later but this is the one I've made tonight little jobby doodah what's it and uh, and Graham sent me as you'll see in the video some of his little stainless steel inserts um, that have been an absolute godsend um, so yes I'll be taking you through how I have a have a play with one on the metal lathe um, and uh, as I said last week I, I've sort of um, ruined more than I've finished you know, well ruined more than than I've finished most definitely um, but they are getting better uh, tonight Mark will be uh, trying to cram as much as he can in a tin um, and uh, it's one of the one of the ones that are quite popular at the moment the, the little ball brand tins with the camera um, he's he's going to have a crack at one of those. Um, exciting week for myself. Um, I, I was down seeing my parents on on Monday, in Reading, and uh, and I ventured. Uh, we were walking back. We took my sister, my little daughter to see the um, the a film at the cinema, um, in whatever it is the latest movie cartoony thing. Um, it was quite funny. Um, but on the way back, we were, uh, we decided to cut through Reading Market and stumbled upon a uh, a brand new um, Esig venture that, that had literally it was their first day of trade um, set up in in the in the in the market there in Reading. Um, had a chat with the guys. Seemed very very nice and very very knowledgeable. Um, it was a pleasure to meet them. And and if you're in the area and if you're in Reading, I believe they'll be there every Saturday. Um, well worth a look. Um, I think they were sort of uh, limited stock at the time being, but hoping to sort of build things up. So it was, it was a nice chat. It was, it was quite quite funny to actually be walking along. And it's the first time I've seen a, a market stall set up. Um, <laughs> I don't get how much. Um, this week has been pretty much incredible. Last well, my 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 boss, uh, the the guy that owns the company I work for, he he owns a a, a sailing yacht, um, a racing yacht, and uh, and our company training day was out on the yacht so uh, sailing out of Pearl Harbor messing around and and we decided to get in the dinghy like falls and and got taken out by the current um, and he had to come and rescue us it was it was interesting and, and I've, I've stuck some pictures up on Facebook if, if you do have me on there it's uh, it's worth a look let's crack on with our first little video before the neighbor's dog drives me to insanity I'm gonna crack on with my venture into uh, in Tip City, and then we will uh, we'll follow on with uh, with Mark's tin. All right, we're back in the room once again, and um, as you can see, we are over the lathe um, with lots and lots and lots of, uh, of pink dust everywhere. I'm uh, I'm proudly joined by uh, a little tip. I believe I don't know whether this is the one, but this is a tip. Um, obviously that Graham has, has put together. Now I wanted to, to just before we start this week talk about a couple of differences um, in materials. Graham is actually working with what's called um, True Stone. Now I was actually working with something that almost looks the same when it's finished up um, but this is a, an acrylic pen blank. This is a True Stone pen blank. The differences are, are quite remarkable. Um, these are, are far more solid, obviously, with the uh, with the steel inserts, um, and they, when you tap them on your, on your on your tooth, for example, they they sound very 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 stony, um, purely because I believe they are mixed with a if you like a crushed stone compound. Now, don't quote me on that. I don't know. I'm no expert, um, but it is what I am led to believe from reading. Let me just show you an example. Um, this is uh, one of the acrylic pranks that uh, a lot of people are working with now. Um, I've seen threads starting all over the place uh, with people making tips. Um, this is an acrylic blank. 
Um, so, you know, this sort of an effect, the purpley stuff, they are acrylic. If I tap it with a, with a metal object, you will hear the difference. So very hollow, a very dull sound. Graham very kindly has sent me some, uh, some stone blanks. Here's one of the stone blanks I've got, and if you listen to this, very, very different. It is, it feels different. It feels like a, uh, well, like a stone, <laughs> as it would. I'm, I'm looking forward to working with this one. I've got a feeling this is going to come up uh, very, very silvery. Um, and uh, he also sent me uh, this one, which is a red with like a gold flecking. Um, I think that is going to lay that brilliantly. I need to hone my skills first. Hence having an acrylic blank um, in the lathe today. I am no expert at this. I, I don't claim to be. Um, I've had a play. And yeah, fair enough. We've, we've come up with some results. This is, if you like, the big brother of, of the one that I showed you last week. Um, what I'm going to be doing, because Graham was also very, very kind, um, and he sent me a load of the blanks, uh, the, the metal bits um, that he was using to insert into the tip so he sent me a load of these blanks to uh, to play with so I don't have to um, do what I was doing before and hollow out the uh, you know the the grommet end as it were for the tip to go in um, so effectively what I was doing and let me see if I can zoom down ever so slightly um, was doing that scenario on the lathe so having to to lay in the uh, the tip and, and, and the rubber so I don't have to do that anymore. Thank you, Graham. Um, that is going to save me a whole heap of pain. What I'm going to do this week um, is going to be uh, a little bit of how I do it, uh, or you know, from watching Graham, um, a little follow-on, which I thought would be good. Um, I found, and I've got this, uh, and you know me and my lives, I am a complete numpty. Um, I'm learning as I go, but I found with this acrylic. This pointy lathe tip in here is, it makes it far easier to uh, to work with. I've got somebody calling me on Skype, so I'm gonna go and bounce them and I'll pop back into. I decided after all the stand making and holders, probably time to get back to making a mod. So I'm gonna use one of these tins, which I'm sure you've seen from a lot of other people. And what I'm going to do is somehow fit all of this inside the tin. As you can see, it just won't fit at the moment. And this is a VV board with a selectable display built in. So that's going to fit in. And a twin battery holder to go with it. A couple of switches, one to switch the display on and off, and one to activate it as normal. Uh, I'm going to use a little, it's a little latch switch to switch the display on and off. One thing I had thought of is I could put a, some kind of micro switch in here mounted up over so that when the case closes it pushes down on this and switches the display off so the display is only on when you open the case. But I haven't got anything that's quite the right size or would mount easily to get it to do because the hardest part is going to be to get the top of the switch at the exact right point so when you shut the lid it switches off. So I'll stick with the latch switch for now. So, let's see. This is how the board comes and in this variation it's just slightly too tight to fit in as this is the orientation I want to put it in. I'll explain why shortly. So what I've done is I took a grinding wheel and with the edge flat on I've just taken off a bit of the excess board that wasn't being used on both ends very very carefully as there wasn't a lot of excess. So I've just got it down to the right size so now when you come to put it in it just slots in just, there's only just enough room. very very tight but it will fit and because it's a metal case and this has contacts on the back 
I'm going to put, need to put a layer of epoxy across the base when I'm working to make sure that none of this contacts with the metal. Important thing to remember. And the batteries. Now, it will fit in like that just, but there's no excess room to work with. So there's no way I'm going to be able to get two 18650s into this mod. So instead what I thought is I could put it this way around and I think there'll be just enough room to fit a pair of 18500s in instead. But we shall see, that's going to be the first job. Now the atomizer connector will go on the end here and I'm going to use this little push switch on the end as well so they're both here so they can sit flat when I'm not using it. The switch isn't ideal but it'll do the job. Not the best choice, wouldn't be my first choice, but it's the right size for this. So, enough waffle, let's get to work. So, I need to take approximately between 15 and 20 mil off the length of this to make it fit in the case. So, this masking tape is 20 mil wide, so I'm going to take just a bit less than that off. And because I'm lazy and it's quick, I'm just going to use the Dremel with the cutting disc just to cut through this section. a bit flat to be honest. Well it's cut through. Not the neatest job I've ever done but you know. definitely flat. Two sticks. At some point in the future I will remember to charge things before I stop. But there's no sign of it happening yet so I'll go to the mains one. See a properly powered tool cuts through it no problem at all. So I don't need that bit anymore. So I'll need to clean off the edges, but for now let's just see if what I'm thinking is going to work. So there's one section there, and another section just there. So that just fits. So I'll take my 18500 battery and I'll pop that in there I'm just to be totally certain there so that's going to sit I'll just epoxy this into place and we have a potential mod I'm very glad that actually worked so in that way around no, I'll get the right one. <laughs> Pop it in that way around. So it's going to sit a pair of batteries there and there. Atomizer holder. Switch. It's somewhere in the middle here. Maybe a little push switch. Not a lot of spare room in this. There you go. Like I say. Right, I've dealt with this, the uh, the cooler, and and I'm back in the room. Now, 
as I was saying, I, I tend to use the pointy bit for this. It may be wrong, um, but it works and, and seems to be proving very consistent on, on the lathe, on the metal lathe. Um, I won't be using uh, hand tools um, as Graham was with, obviously he was on uh, a wood lathe. Um, different kettle of fish on, on the metal lathe. Um, I may be able to get the roundy things. But what I intend to do is try and mimic this sort of shape. Uh, there's there's no plan. Uh, there's there's nothing that that <laughs> there's a guide. This is all sort of uh, made up as you go along, um, and and just see how it goes type sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to power up the lathe. Um, it may get a bit noisy, and I'm going to start um, streaming back some of this plastic. <laughs> As you can see, it, it does bind tightly on there. Um, you can run the lathe back to, to release this, but I prefer to just take it off this way. I think I'm roughly at a nice thickness there. I'm going to start trying to work in some sort of shape. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
hopefully you can see the sort of shape building up there. So obviously this is going to be our end where our ebb is going and this is going to be our drip tip. Let me keep uh, working away that a little bit more and, uh, and I'll pop back. And there we go, we're back in the room once again. Yeah, I, I, I may need to check the lathe. It's, it's popped up in chat that, that it is pulsing. Now, according to the manual uh, and the YouTube videos on that lathe, apparently um, it's something to do with a keeping a constant speed under different loads, this, that, and the other. So it, it constantly pulses the voltage. I haven't got a clue. Um, but I've seen a few of that model when I was looking at it on, on YouTube that do the same thing. Um, but I will uh, I will talk to the guys and, and find out. Um, it may be me. I may have the gears wrong or something. I don't know. Um, we'll find out. Um, this weekend, I believe, this very weekend, um, and he's looking for it. There it is. Uh, this very weekend, this is happening. Once again, yes, knees meet next weekend, uh, or well, this weekend, um, 29th. Um, obviously, loads and loads of people are going to be there. I'm sure it'll be a great meet. Unfortunately, I can't make it. My my wife works at uh, on a Sunday at approximately 4:30 in the morning, um, which isn't good, and I have to do the child thing, um, looking after the daughter. Now, it was suggested I could put her in the boot and bring her. However, um, I would be 
dead. Um, let's crack on with our next little bit of, uh, of Mark's tin mod and then we'll get back into me. Um, and I, I kept all the fingers. I did keep all the fingers um, despite, I, just a quickie, probably shouldn't stick your hand in the lathe while it's spinning to remove the plastic bits. Um, but it seemed a good idea at the time. As I say, I'm learning as I go. Um, if you've got a lathe, you probably know that already. Um, I am a complete lathe numpty and learning. Uh, so yeah, probably probably won't do that again. Um, saying that, I did do it tonight. Um, let's crack on, see you in a bit. Now that I've proved to myself that the, it's gonna work the way I'm, I thought it would, uh, it's time to modify the case, which in this case, case only involves drilling a couple of holes so one for the switch and one for the atomizer so I've marked out a couple of points and what you've got to work with is one centimeter wide uh, which in the case of the atomizer is a nine mil hole near enough so exactly halfway between the two edges that should just fit in there it's gonna be a bit tight but there you go and for this particular switch the hole needs to be, well, near enough a quarter of an inch for it to fit through properly. So I've marked it exactly the same way, half a centimetre in. And apologise, apologies for people out there for mixing uh, metric and imperial measurements. But it's just easier to describe some things one way and some things another. So we'll start off with the pilot hole. Just line it up on the mark and very carefully close the tin that will give me a bit extra grip. Very thin metal, so very easy to move it out of place. But very easy to move it back as well. So I'll start off with this marked out at a quarter inch. So I'll do the switch one first. And I now know I need to be very careful not to put any pressure on this whatsoever. seconds which for me works perfectly for an atomizer connector. Others may want to do a bigger hole to make it easier to fit straight in but I prefer this. Uh, 
kills without causing too much damage. Take away the masking tape. And there you've got a fairly clean hole. There's a lot of bits of swath on the inside which you need to be very careful to remove. Otherwise you can give yourself a nasty cut working on this. And I'll just knock that back with a file probably, or a bit of sandpaper even. And I'll be back when I've cleaned it up. So we have our two holes cut out and cleaned up a bit. So, so that one which is just sitting there nicely. Flush with the unit. Probably sealed in with a bit of epoxy putty, I think, just to build up the strength because all you've got to hold it in place basically is a very thin piece of metal. And this switch, because of its design, should be simple enough just to slot it through. Or not as the case may be, I've underestimated the size of that hole. So, back to the drill. Always better if you underestimate rather than overestimate. So I need to take one step bigger, I think. Okay, so I'm sort of getting there. I'm just going to give it a, a another final little tweak in places. Um, it's sort of like a pawn shape. <laughs> Not pawn. Um, yeah, you know what I mean. So there's effectively airbrush shape. It's, it's not a big, nice, bobbly end. It, it, it's a a little uh, a little prawn shape. Um, air, obviously, air, air bell end. <laughs> oh God, this isn't going wrong. Uh, air little um, bobbly end. This end. <laughs> and uh, oh God, I was going to call that a shaft. Then I won't. Um, and and our little uh, mouthpiece here with with the lip. Um, what I'm going to do now, obviously this, this will be the point where I'm, I'm going to cut off. Um, I'm going to get some sandpaper on this now. Um, I'm going to start probably with, with a 150 grit to, to start with, um, just to take this down. And um, I'll come back when I've sort of got it into a uh, reasonable state and um, I can clean my mind. Uh, I'll be back in two. Right, so all I'm doing... Let me take that out a little bit. I think it seemed to be struggling with the focus. You can see there's, there's a slight sheen starting to, to come on this now. All I'm doing with this is literally 
I'm not going to do this. Well, you know, different people, different methods, and, and obviously I've learned a lot watching Graham. Um, I will wet this a little bit later, but this is acrylic. Um, and the stone, obviously, that Graham was working with, a little bit different, maybe I don't know. But I'm using a 150 grit paper, and I'm just working it ever so slightly just to take out um, any of the machine marks to start with. Then I will wet this paper up. Let me just, I'll show you how I'm working this to start with. It's only about 700 RPM on, on the, uh, let's take it up to about 800. I'm just going to protect the uh, the bed and I will give this a little bit of, uh, of water. I've got a pot of water down here and I will start wetting this down with the sandpaper. You can see already that's looking quite nice. Same paper, this isn't a wet dry but normal sandpaper, 150 grit. <laughs> to uh, sort of get somewhere I've got most of the uh, of the marks out of there and you can see how this is starting um, starting to come together nowhere near as much as a masterpiece as, as what Graham has done um, I'm gonna pop away what I'm gonna do is uh, get this polished up I'm gonna start with the the same micro mesh um, that, that Graham was using um, the same micro mesh and start getting this uh, polished. Um, once I've got this polished um, I'll need to drill out, insert the tip um, and do all that sort of stuff. I'm trying to get this done in, in one hit so it may be a little bit choppy um, but effectively the same process. I'm going to start with, with a, uh, a very 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 uh, start with the highest which is about a 3400 micro mesh and work all the way down. I'm going to get most of this end done as Graham did um, and then I will once I've got this done and this drilled, I'll cut this off and, and glue the uh, glue the ending. I may not be able to show you all of that. Um, effectively, it's showing you realistically how I do it on on the metal lathe, or um, how I try to do it on on the metal lathe. Uh, I'll pop back into. And there we go. For the first time on Vapor Trails TV, I did show everybody my. Um, no, I won't go there. Uh, yes, uh, let's go into a second little ad break. I'll pop back very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley.
Ten-year tip with Gary Dibley. And we are back in the room once again. Um, I need to crack on rather rapidly uh, because we may well very come very very close to time. Uh, let's crack on with Mark's final bit today on his tin mod, and then I'll be finishing um, polishing my end. And now, that will fit through. My memory, of course, because I've drilled that out again, I need to make sure I clean off the edges. Obviously, you don't want to leave a sharp edge and end up cutting yourself. But as you can see, that switch is going to sit there without any extra help. So I'll just screw in place nicely. I may add a dab of super glue on the inside just to hold it in place a bit more. But then again, I may not. Stuck. Yeah. Always keep it screwed back in place because I don't want to lose the bits. I think the next thing I want to get done is probably going to be to add a layer of epoxy, a clear epoxy to the entire base to make sure everything gets insulated off from the casing and at the same time I'll glue in the battery holder. So we're going to want to mix up a fair bit of epoxy here. as possible because you really don't have a lot of time before this sets off. I think I may have mentioned a few things. So I'm much literally just going to pour this entire amount in. Oh. 
we'll sit them in there. Now it's going to sit down there. So, if I do that, make sure the wires are well out of the way. before I started. Slight mistake, shall we say. Or oversight, probably a better term. And now all we have to do is wait for it to set off. In the meantime I'll grab a bit of insulation tape and just Cover off the two ends to be safe. There's a direct shot along the batteries at this point, it would be not a good thing. Yeah. Back later. So I've given the glue a couple of minutes to start the set off. It's not fully set and this would be an ideal time to remove the batteries to stop them from getting glued into the case. So it's a little bit difficult to pull them out. And free them from the glue, clean off any glue later on. And that'll make sure that I can use the batteries again. Right, back next week. Right, well as you can see I've, I've worked this now right the way down through the grits and uh, the, the bits that are coming through are almost glass like. They are, it is uh, a very, very good sheen coming through on there now. Um, my next step is going to be um, drill for the uh, stainless steel 510 connection um, which is going to go in this end. I don't know if I'm going to film that. Um, I'm trying to get this wrapped up as, as quick as I can um, so we can show you a, uh, a finished tip. But effectively, I need to make this now fit in tend of here. Um, so I've got to drill this through to round about just past the, uh, the, the, the ball. I'm not going to call it a bell end again. I just did. Um, the ball. So I need to drill that through, uh, so that is going to sit um, central in there. Um, and then I've got to cut this off um, so it will uh, be free. And then once this is fixed, I'll drill from the other end and, um, and we'll go from there. I apologise if the colour is going in and out, but uh, it's been a bugger under the lights today. But effectively, this is where we're at. Um, I'm going to go away and drill now and uh, I'll come back hopefully when, when this is fixed in place um, and, uh, and we've piled off. But effectively all it means um, for cutting off for me on, on, the, on the metal lathe is going to be to bring in the same tool that I've been working with and, and effectively bring that in at this end and just work this through. This will come off in my hand and uh, then I need to uh, drill from the other end. And I use the same technique as Graham has, which is once this is fixed in, I'll pop that in to the other end and um, drill through the other way. Pop back in two. Okay. So hopefully now uh, I've drilled out my end there and my stainless steel 510 connection should slot in there very nicely. 
Um, next thing for me to do, I know I'm not showing a lot of this, I'm trying to get it nailed in, in one here. I'm going to go away, I'm going to cut this off, I'm going to get this fixed in and glued, and, uh, and we'll come back in two. But, it's working, yes, it's quite tight in there. Graham did say to me, these may be ever so slightly oversized, I've had to ream a little bit out, that's as tight as buggery. Um, see you in a bit. Right, as you can see, I have now fixed in my stainless steel 510 connection. Uh, I've fixed it in and I've uh, got it sealed in place. Um, the only thing I've got left to do now is, as you can see, where that was parted from, from, the, uh, from the main bit, I've already got my hole right the way through there. You know, probably see all the way through. There we go. Um, what I've got to do now is effectively, um, as Graham did last week, secure this with a 510 connection in the lathe. One tip I learnt, absolutely love that tip. Um, and what I'm going to be using is, um, is one of my reaming bits um, here. To start with, I'm just going to face this off on the end um, and, and tidy up this, this mouthpiece. And then I'm going to use a reaming bit and just gradually ease that in um, to, to form a well. Now I'm not too bothered about this being used for dripping. Um, this is going on a tank or a rebuildable etty, so not that bothered. I'm going to strap this in the lathe um, and face this end off uh, and then I'll pop back in two, uh, see how we get on. I don't know how I'm going to film all the process, I'm trying to get this done really 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 quickly and uh, and sort of narrow it down and get it done in, in one week. Um, this is a follow on from from learning from the master and uh, lessons, serious lessons we'll learn and uh, and again thank you very very much Graham and thank you very much for uh, for sending this um, he did send drip tips for all of the team for which we are very very grateful um, back in two so I've used the 510 connection, uh, secured that in as, as Graham did in, in the uh, in the attic. And I'm just using the same process again. I'm going through 150 grit on the outside. <laughs> Now I've just got to go through the uh, the grit process again. Very time consuming this. Pop back in two. So after reaming and polishing uh, the end piece, we have our little drip well. You can see right the way through there. Um, all nicely polished on there. All down round that way. So there is student drip tip learning from master um, very very happy with that um, extremely happy with that um, I wouldn't have even picked these up if it wasn't for, uh, for for talking with Graham and I really do nearly dropping it appreciate the fact that Graham has sent me a lot of stuff to, to aid me to, to do this um, extremely extremely happy with with the outcome um, liking that a lot. This one, what do I do with it? I don't know. Not sure. Let's find out. And we are back in the room. And uh, yes, said drip tip. It looked huge on the screen, but here's a, here's a diddy tiny little thing. Um, and I have been uh, making quite a few. Graham and was very very kind and sent me uh, a number of uh, stainless steel inserts um, to play and practice with um, which very very grateful um, now I did say at the end of that what do I do with it now I've, I normally run um, a annual auction uh, for vapors um, for children in need um, and I was talking with Graham um, last night and uh, Graham, Graham is gonna gonna back me with this, um, and he is going to uh, supply me with a number of inserts, 
and um, effectively what I'm going to be doing uh, nearer the time um, when, when the children in need auction thing, when I kick all that off, um, I'm going to be selling effectively a tip a day um, leading up to the main children in need auction. Uh, so all of the funds from, from the, the tips that I make will be going to the children in need fund. Um, so thanks very much Graham for for backing that um, it, it, it'd be good so I'm not sure when it's going to be um, I, I am going to have to uh, as was discussed probably sell a couple to make money to buy the materials um, and then my time and uh, Graham Stanley Stewart inserts will provide a tip a day um, and all the proceeds will go to children in need directly no money will come to me um, so hopefully that will be coming up very very soon um, so you know I'm not selling tips um, it's going to be for for the children or anything my little bit for this year and obviously I'm going to start setting that up and 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 launching that very very soon um, so don't forget this week to tune in uh, tomorrow night to to Marco and following on from uh, Marco's show we have this Um, so yes, uh, all done and dusted for this week. Where do we go next week? I do not know. Um, as per usual, if you have any ideas, uh, anything you want us to make, you want us to look at, just let us know. Um, happy to do anything within reason. Um, with all that said, it has been emotional once again. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in. And uh, again, Cheers to, to Graham for sorting that out and enabling me to do that little bit. Um, it's time to go. I will catch you all later. Sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley.